Hi there, it's Rishabh Rajan again and today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite MIDI controllers of all time. This one here, the MIDI Fighter Twister. As you can see, it's a grid of knobs, endless encoders specifically. What's really cool is that you get these LEDs that indicate the current value for each of the individual controls. So you don't have to be looking at your computer screen, you can just be looking at this to know what the value is. Now aside from 16 knobs, these are also buttons very satisfying. So you can even map that. Let's say you want to turn on and off effects, you can map that button there. You also get buttons on the sides. There are three buttons on the left here and three buttons on the right. Now I'm not going to talk about using this as a MIDI controller and MIDI mapping things. I'm going to show you a very specific use case scenario. What I want to do is use this as a live or real-time visualizer. Let me show you an example. As you can see here, we're getting real-time visualization of the track that you're hearing. I've split up the audio into three different parts, lows, mids, and highs. So each row represents those, lows, mids, and highs, and this row doesn't do anything. I could still map this to control certain things if I want to. Now what's really interesting is that this system also works for real-time audio input. So currently, the twister is reacting to my voice in real-time. I can't produce as much low end, but fun nonetheless. I have Ableton Live open with an audio track with the song that I'm planning to use. Let's have a quick listen to this. Sweet. I also have a MIDI track set up here, and the MIDI track is sending its output to the MIDI Fighter Twister on channel 1. Now in order for these LEDs to react to anything that's coming in from Ableton Live, we need to send MIDI CC data back to the MIDI Fighter Twister. That's why on this MIDI track, I have the output set to the MIDI Fighter. Now these knobs do send MIDI CCs, but I don't know which one sends what. So what I can do is open up the MIDI Fighter Utility application. And the MIDI Fighter Utility application will tell me which knob is sending which CC. So let's say I select this knob, and over here under encoder rotary MIDI settings and under encoder MIDI number, you can see here it says MIDI number one or MIDI CC number one. If I select this one, it says five, this one it says nine, and this one it says 13. All right, so that's good to know. Now on this MIDI track here, I'm gonna load a MIDI device called CC Control. And this is just stock in Ableton Live Suite. So CC Control has these custom knobs that can be assigned to any CCs. So I'm going to assign this to CC number one. And what was it? CC number five for the next one. Next one was nine. I'm just doing everything in one row here. And the last one in this row is 13. So now when I twist the knob on the CC control application, we can see that the knob on the twister reacts. Great. Let me check the other one. That's the one below that, the one below that, and the one below that. Awesome, so they all are working. All right, so we got this reaction to work. Now, how do I make the knobs react to the audio track? For this, we're gonna make use of the envelope follower. Now, I'm gonna set this up on a return track, and it'll make sense in a second why I'm doing this on a return track. So I'm gonna click on Create here, and I'm going to insert a return track. So at the bottom here, I have my return track. And on this return track, let's search for the expression, sorry, not the expression control, but the envelope follower. Envelope follower. All right, so here's my envelope follower. Um, I need to send the signal from this audio track over to the envelope follower. So this little slider here will do that. Let's crank it up to full. All right, let's switch over to session view so we can see things better. So here's my audio track, here's my MIDI track, and here's that send. Now, I don't want to hear this, so I'm going to just bring the volume down, or we can actually turn off this track completely. So the envelope follower is going to work, we're just not going to be able to hear it. And we will hear the sound from the main audio track. 
All right, so I'm gonna to switch to the envelope follower view. So take a look at what happens here as I hit play on my audio clip. So this yellow data here is the control signal that is being generated based on the incoming audio. Now it's reacting way too fast. I'm gonna increase this fall to smoothen it out a bit. And this is gonna work much better. All right, so we need to now map this to the CC control knobs but I do want to split the signal into three different frequency bands first. In order to do that, I'm going to make use of the EQ3 device. So let's look for that, EQ3. I'm going to load the EQ3 before the envelope follower. I'm going to turn off the mids, turn off the highs, so we just have the low frequencies. So now this envelope follower is just listening to the low frequencies, and now I can map this to the knob over here. Let's go ahead and do it to the other ones as well on the same row so they all will react together. So I'll click on map here, click over here, and that's mapped. Let's bring the knob all the way down. All right, so we need to do two more mappings. Click on map here, click the knob here, and the last one, click on map here, and then click on this knob. All right, so the mappings are done. Now we should see some activity on the MIDI fighter twister. All right, it's a little weak, but that's easy to fix. On the envelope follower, I'm just gonna adjust the gain. I think that looks good. Sweet. Now we just need to do the same thing for the mid frequency and the high frequency. I'm going to set up different knobs for that. So we've already used up all the knobs on this CC control, but I'll just add another CC control. And then now I have four more of these knobs. I just have to figure out what are the CCs for the next row. So that's 2, 6, 10, and 14. So I'll set this to 2, 6, 10, and 14. All right, so on the envelope follower, we can't use this envelope follower because this is set up for the low frequencies. So let's select both of these devices and group them to put them inside an audio effect track. I'm gonna rename this to low. And then I'll right click and duplicate it and rename that to mid. And I'll turn off the lows and turn on the mids for this one. All right, we've lost all our mappings. That's great because now we need to do separate mappings. I'll click over here. Click over here, click over here. All right, done. Now we may have to adjust the gain, but let's have a look real quick. Yeah, definitely weaker. Let's add some gain. That looks good. Maybe fall can be a bit smoother. Nice, so that's working well. Last one is the high frequency, so I'll duplicate this, rename this to high, turn off mids, turn on high, and on the MIDI fighter utility application, check what the CCs are, 3, 7, 11, and 15. All right, so I'll just duplicate this, and I'll set this to 3, 7, 11, and 15. So back in the envelope follower, let's do the mappings just like before. So we have four of these here for the entire row. A little tedious, takes some time, but the end result is worth it. All right, let's check the gain for this high frequency range. Definitely weak. Add some gain here, adjust the fall. And that is looking pretty good. So that's basically it. That's how you convert your MIDI Fighter Twister into a real-time visualizer. Now, you can also do this for real-time audio, or you can also do this with real-time audio. So instead of using an existing audio clip, you can just have real-time audio coming in on a track, let's say a microphone signal coming in, and then this will accordingly react to that. All right, so I hope you found this MIDI Fighter Twister tutorial helpful. Now, I'd like to know where you would use this maybe in a DJing scenario where you're performing live and you need some kind of a real-time visualization, 
or maybe you are an electronic music performer and you need some kind of visual metronome that could be pretty helpful or maybe you're just trying to impress a friend i'd like to know how and where you would use this technique all right so this is rishabh rajan signing off and i'll see you in the next one <laughs>